already you are aware of Amazon S3. This S3 is nothing but you are going to store, you are going to store all type of your data. Whether you want to store your PDF data, you want to store your image data, you want to store your uh, audio data, any type of data you can store in your S3. So here S3, the cost is in a pyramid, pyramid way. Already hope you are having the pyramid in nothing but a triangle way. Once your data size, the data growth has increased storing in S3 bucket, the price is going to very, very, very less. So the price follows here, it's a pyramid model. It's a pyramid model to storing the data in S3. Here, they, they, it's we providing very cheaper cost compared to a physical infrastructure. You can scale the infrastructure very easily. Once I moved into that, then I can show you how the what is the current architecture and how the cloud architecture is going to be replaced and what are the features in terms of scalability, in terms of cost, in terms of security, in terms of the manageability as well. So I will show you uh, what are the steps. So before moving ahead with that, I want to explain you what are the services. You've done with S3, you've done with EC2, you've done with IAM, right? So once you've got a clarity what it is and how it is, then I will show you what is the relationship between one service to another service. I will explain to you know your, your S3 and EC2 relation. Both should be in the same region. Then only the data is moving from EC2 to the S3 or S3 to EC2. Otherwise it's not. And that is the latest emerging technology along with the cloud computing is your big data or Hadoop. I hope you all are Mm, listened about big data and how to and how it is and all. So, as part of big data, you want to analyze the logs. You want to see the traffic patterns out of 24 hours, from which time to which time the traffic is more, and from which region the number of hits are more, and and moreover, out of your application site is having 10 pages. Out of 10 pages, which page is having very, very high demand? That means where the number of pages is having the number of hits more. The number of hits are more. You are calling the page is a demandable page compared to the remaining all the pages. So this is how you are going to see the traffic patterns and so forth. For the analyzation of the logs, you are going to store that data in your S3 bucket. Now, there is one more service. Amazon Elastic Load Balancing it distributes the incoming application traffic across the multiple Amazon EC2 instances providing greater fault tolerance and the scalability. Amazon Elastic Load Balancing the features first one it detects the unhealthy instances within a pool. Within a pool in the sense within your same project you, you are for your same project you take in 10 EC2 instances out of 10 EC2 instances, how many instances are up and running, how many instances are, are mm, maybe any, any, any health checkup. The uh, instance health checkup is going to be applicable on all the instances under a pool, and under a group of instances, instance pool you can talk it about. And we can be added, with, enabled within a single availability zone or across the multiple zones. Here, the elastic load balancing, we can apply that in single zone or across all the zones which are available in that particular uh, under AWS account. And can also be used in an Amazon virtual private cloud. It is not at all talking about only private cloud or public cloud. In wherever you want to use your elastic load balancer, yes, you can use it. And the features of this is you can distribute the incoming traffic across your Amazon EC2 instances. So, uh, one instance may contain may contain high volume. One instance may contain less volume of the data. So, but that is not the best practices. So, always the ELB ELB service is running on top of your all instances which was launched in, under your account. Then it will take care about distribu equally distribution of data in all the instances among the same pool and you can create and manage the security groups associated with your ELB and you can create a load balancer without a public IP addresses as well. That means why because your manual intervention should not be there whenever your ELB is running. So you are going to specify that ELB is running for a specific IP address. If the request is coming then only you can run ELB command. Otherwise in your project maybe 50 members or 60 members of people are there 
then 50 members, 60 members of people, everybody is not having the privilege to run ELB surveys. Then only 2 to 3 surveys, 2 to 3 people are having the privileges. Then you can configure those who are 2 to 3 people. They cannot, mm, the system cannot identify these are the organized people. How the system is going to be identified? The system is going to identify based upon the IP addresses. If the request is coming from so and so IP, then it is validate. It is valid, a valid service request. Otherwise, it is an unauthorized service request. It's consideration. Then, in the same way, it is taking it into prioritization. It will run the elastic load balancer on top of all your group of instances which you launched under the group. Then it was uh, e ELB is running, and the volume of the data it is equally distributed in all the in all the three. And you can be configured Amazon Route 53. This is another service to perform the DNS failover. That is another service, Amazon Route 53. We, we should not call Amazon Route 53. We should call only Amazon Route 53. Why it is? I will tell you once I'm discussing it, probably in the next class. The Route Route 53 will discuss. So there we are going to see, and it supports the ability to stick user sessions to specific EC2 instances, and supports SSL termination at the load balancer. What do you mean by SSL? What do you mean by SSL? Anybody having an idea? Simple secure layer and allows you to control the ciphers and protocols that are accepted by the ELB. So that's what it is taking very, very um, high security by running the ELB services and supports the use of both internet protocol version IPv4 and IPv6 here. And here you can see how we are creating elastic load balancing and launch the AWS management console and select the load balancer left from the column of the management console in the upper hand side. So this is how, how you are going to use your load balancer. I will show you practically.